Hello, I'm Tim Cockrell from Wise Media. I'm joined today by Dr. Reinhard Posch from the Austrian government. You are, in fact, CIO of the federal government of Austria. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you. One of the areas that um, I understand you are very involved in from the um, Austrian but also European Commission's point of view is cloud usage in the public sector and how ICT, which is pervasive everywhere now in private and now public sector, is being used and leveraging on, the, on, on cloud technology. Um, I understand there are several issues involved, but probably what I'd like to begin with is if you could paint a picture of what, it, what currently exists. Okay, uh, let me start with an observation. Uh, well, we see that uh, following all these events which are you know, around NSA Snowden, etc., etc., Europe, especially small and medium industries, but also uh, governments are very shy when it cuts to cloud. And uh, in, in, in this environment, uh, Euro European Commission, uh, Commissioner Cruz, uh, uh, was initiating a very informal group for discussion, uh, which is the European Cloud Partnership, which consists of uh, representatives of member states uh, and of high-ranking representat representatives of industry like CEOs from SAP, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, to see what we can do about the situation to better take cloud in the public sector and to overcome the hurdles uh, where, where we uh, uh, have a different situation uh, in government than in private industry. Uh, because we are administrating data from our citizens, sure. so we have responsibilities towards them, responsibilities which are basically uh, sustainability, not losing data, but also efficiency, and that drives us into cloud. And uh, we have the obligations around data protection, which is uh, one of the prime issue in that context because we have totally different um, perceptions of data protection when it comes to US or when it comes to Europe mm, and also within Europe so one of the first uh, tasks we have to uh, undergo there is to have a more seamless view of what data protection is within Europe then we have to address uh, all these data locations uh, uh, issues uh, where many member states have um, de facto regulations uh, which says that they have to process their data within their country or at least within Europe. That will be something we, we have to agree with industry. Uh, and we will see how, whether it's only on a contractual basis or whether you need something beyond that. To bring, it, bring so. it back a step um, to individual governments or individual member states within Europe, you see quite a lot these days is the e-government services, the e-government um, platform, if you like, which is accessible, is ending up in the cloud or is being talked about to, to become managed by cloud services. So that's sort of within the confines of what a, an individual government might offer. You're now talking about, and I understand, I think it's is it called Cloud for Europe, which is your end point from the partnership. Is, is that sort of looking at a, at a bigger cloud to sort of integrate these smaller ones? Or doesn't it work like that? No, I, I think you have a, a different view of the notion of cloud for Europe. Now, you, I, I just briefly spoke about the uh, cloud partnership. Mm -hmm. The cloud for Europe is a project associated with a cloud partnership to prove that the concepts which are uh, developed in the partnership are feasible. So cloud for Europe is a um, FP7 research project okay, uh, where uh, the, uh, it's a pre-commercial procurement project and it should prove that uh, anything we ask for is really 
feasible in the, in the private sector, oh, by industry. Uh, therefore, the Cloud for Europe project uh, has a phase of definition, then it has a phase of this pre-commercial procurement, oh, yes. and then uh, dissemination. So it will not yield a product uh, by itself, but it will yield basic knowledge on how to use cloud and how to procure cloud. Uh, contractually, you know, you probably have looked into existing contracts that are offered by cloud providers. Uh, they are not fully compatible w with uh, legal provisions we have around uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, uh, probably uh, services will end up in the cloud. Mm. But we have to define what that means. You know. Uh, we see now that many member states are saying we are in the cloud and what they mean by that is they built some cloud structure on a national basis or on a bilateral among several member states basis but still a sort of private cloud. Yeah, that's and what I mean, a sort of the, private. The question, the question yeah. will be to what extent can we benefit from the public cloud if we make it a private cloud, we will still stay in a commercial range which is ways less attractive than the public cloud. Is this impacted by the emerging changes into M government? Do you think? Uh, it, it has one, you know, one foot in that oh. uh, road uh, uh, because we see that as of this year we are selling more tablets and mobile, then laptops and PCs. And uh, on the mid-term run, this will have a, a big uh, impact on the whole view on how we deliver government. And one of, uh, that was one of the reasons why on the electronic identification in 2010 in Austria, we switched or we added to the normal card-based electronic authentication the mobile phone based uh, authentication which enables any mobile phone to do qualified electronic identification and qualified signature so that you can really uh, envision how it gets to bring your own device uh, use your tablet etc etc and this is essential because that, that is sort of and it's this whole cloud. bring your own device which is to some extent in, in industry is has been seen as an issue because people may not necessarily be in their workplace. They could be anywhere. They could be in a public area. They're not necessarily totally protected. The same, I would imagine, in the public sector. If somebody's on holiday, say in Spain, and they're from from Austria, and they need to access something through the government, what? M government thing, they can do it from there. Are there restrictions in place that might? prevent them from doing that or are we talking about a sort of uh, I'd coin a phase like a borderless way I think you, you perhaps describe it a bit differently uh, I do not really think that what you just mentioned is an issue uh, we are now in Abu Dhabi and I can access the whole files of my government sure. with my laptop or even with my tablet using electronic identification mm. so the, the the being away is not uh, not the big issue it's it's rather the the need that we still can be uh, informed that we still can be up to date when we are in a different location and it might be professionally like in Brussels mm. and you uh, you have to access your data absolutely yeah. uh, the, the more uh, complicated issue is liability when you bring your own device. Who is managing your device? Is it acceptable that uh, the government office would manage your private device? I would say no. Mm. On the other hand, if you are managing your device, is it security-wise acceptable that you use it? And this is something we, we will have clearly to observe. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a big issue, mm -hmm. uh, and it goes slowly in this uh, way, w which I also tried to address uh, in my presentation, um, when we uh, use document in collaboration online, because there uh, the 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 
the picture becomes a bit, little bit blurred. I see. Uh, yeah. So far we had the document on our devices and then we delivered the documents in, in some files and uh, you know, uh, delivered it to people, etc., etc. Now, um, with uh, Google Docs, with Office 365, etc., etc., we see, and I would say in a, in a five, ten years' time, uh, it will be more or less the standard that you have a uh, cloud cloud organized somehow, cloud organized uh, uh, document processing, document generation, collaboration. It has many good aspects, mm -hmm. but when you go back to all what, uh, what we think about data protection, uh, we are not ready at the moment to throw this away. Sure. And I Absolutely. don't think that it yeah. would be good to throw it away. No. Right. So we have to find ways, and I, I think on all these avenues, on the avenue uh, electronic identity, which is cloud compatible, mm -hmm. on uh, data storage and data use in a uh, compatible way, which means uh, your really private data must be uh, encrypted and decrypted in, within your uh, jurisdiction mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, it's only a small percentage, so it doesn't okay, really matter. So that, yeah. uh, and handling uh, electronic documents. If we solve these issues, then we get the big step really into cloud. Right. So how long do you think, I mean, what, what's your prediction of the future? Just very, very briefly, what do you think um, we're going to be we, looking We always at? talk that, you know, IT is very fast and aggressive. But I think we, we will need another five to so ten years to be step there. step by step, a lot to, yeah. lot to, to look be there. there. I think yeah. ten years is a good, yeah. good guess. Good. Well, <laughs> hopefully we'll be here in ten years' time, so you can tell us then. Thanks I very much. I don't think that I will be around in ten years' time. I do this job already since thirteen years. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks okay. for joining Thank me. You. <laughs>